as soon as we got the call, we flew from Oahu, but uh, it, this all really happened quickly. Of course, the alert level was raised, and then just a short time after that, around 4.30, we got word that, yes, in fact, Kilauea is erupting again. Streets and backyards for some residents are flooded right now, as the Navy says repairs could take more than a week to complete. After eight years, Governor David Ige reflecting on the highs and lows of his time in charge of the state. I sat down with the governor for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Once they make their way through the tunnel and they get suited up, this is where they actually go in as the divers and look at that contaminated water. You can see just how narrow it is. Once they're suited up, they're attached to what's called an umbilical to supply them with air, and then they go all the way down this 80-foot hole. We also saw the damage all over the place from power poles and trees down to power outages. We're going to show you some of the damage the winds have already caused in just a bit. And this lava lake filled up pretty quick right now. As you see right here, Look at that. You can still see those multiple little fountains uh, creating those ripples, those uh, that pool of lava. Welcome back. And as Pete was saying, in just a couple hours, it's officially going to be summer. And on a hot day in Hawaii, the heat can be dangerous. You might remember the story that we first brought you last August. You see right there that offensive license plate that we're talking about. One of those moments, as you just mentioned, Congresswoman, was uh, when the president said ban assault weapons now. I know when you were running for mm -hmm. office, that's something we, we talked with you about. A Big Island man racked up a litany of charges after what started with a getaway after an armed robbery ended with a car crash. As you all know, Hawaii was the first state to legalize abortion and currently those protections are still in place. So the question is, what are your personal thoughts on abortion? And if elected governor, would you try and change our state laws? You really didn't mince words with them. You, you, you said, you know, you want them to follow that order. Just, they've actually chained themselves to this cattle guard. One of them, Walter Ritty, he's been here since the beginning. Um, you know, what are you concerned about now? It's now seven o'clock. Technically, this is when uh, police are here. Yeah, they're coming. I like their malasadas, but I don't like anything pumpkin spice. Like this whole month, I'm, I'm sick of it being <laughs> imposed on me well, everywhere. You know what? I, I'm a big fan. The patty melts yeah. on Whataburger. If you know, you know. I was hoping that one was going to come to Hawaii, but yeah. hopefully that'll be next. Yeah. While we're at it, give us a Trader Joe's on the Chipotle. <laughs> and While an in and out subject. too. Yeah. When roots run deep. I quit my job to work with my father up here at 26, and um, he turned it over to me maybe around 29. You make those roots grow. Hanalei Bishop building this land into Homestead Poi in Waiahole. There's good days and bad days, rain and sun, even some floods, but nothing like this. There have been times where it's gotten pretty bad, but none of them had the kind of impact that this flood ha ha has had on us. This raging river wasn't there before, created by this week's storms, still flowing right on top of Hanalei's taro patches. Each one of these should have been about 1,200 pounds of taro that I, that I would, would have been able to count on, uh, which is just gone. That's gone. His entire summer and winter crop gone, along with the money that would have come with it. I've got six to eight more weeks worth of income, and then I've got nothing until um, all of this kind of gets fixed. It's a daunting task, and even with a world of encouragement. Hindsight's always 2020. But anyway, it sure too is. bad. Ugh. It's enough to make even the best want to throw in the towel. So what's keeping you going now? Looking at this. <sighs> but when roots run deep, you never give up. Taro is such a resilient crop that it stands back up, you know, even after something like that. And so even for myself, you know, you just got to kind of stand back up afterwards. So a lot of questions do remain about what led up to that crash. And KITV4's Tom George live now from the scene on Oneava Street this morning. Tom, what's the latest? Yeah, good morning, Lindsay and Mleko. Those are some of the questions investigators are trying to piece together as they continue to investigate that crash that happened just about 24 hours ago. Now that the sun's coming up, we're seeing a lot of people heading out to work, and this stretch of Oneawa uh, is still blocked off uh, right now. I want to step out of the way and give you a look right there. You can see right there in the distance, there's the tail of the chopper uh, sticking out right there. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, just landing right in the middle of a busy street in a residential area so certainly uh, really shocking for neighbors and I want to show you some video uh, of what this looked like yesterday as, as we mentioned you can see it right there in the middle of the street yesterday uh, it was it was a fiery crash neighbors telling us this all happened in the span of just about 10 or 15 seconds but they say the warning signs were there even as the plane was coming down they say that uh, there was debris flying everywhere and some of them had to run and all of a sudden I said Boom! I said, oh, it started to fall apart. I said, oh, I saw a piece coming towards me. Then I said, the helicopter started coming towards me. I said, okay. 
run. Yeah, so certainly a scary situation for them. The good news, of course, uh, nobody on the ground was actually injured in all of this, but certainly, unfortunately, uh, two passengers and the pilot were killed. Uh, we're still waiting to learn more information, but we do know that this was a uh, tour helicopter. It was run by a company called No Victor. Um, they're uh, also uh, being investigated. Uh, also concerns as well exist over the fact that there was another incident with that company uh, just about uh, six months ago. So uh, that's all part of the investigation that's being looked into by the FAA and the NTSB. So uh, again, this area is still blocked off as people are waking up, but um, a, lot of, a lot of concerns still over those low-flying tour helicopters. That's all part of the investigation, but uh, 24 hours later, still very much an active scene. We're going to continue to stay out here all morning. Well, they say sometimes it takes the next generation to step up and do what the adults in the room can't. And that's especially true for two bold eighth graders from Kauai over the weekend who weren't afraid to take the cause to shut down Red Hill straight to the second highest leader in the country. It's not every day you see the vice president of the United States on a beach at Hanalei Bay surrounded by Secret Service. There's actually like people on the pier with like guns and like they had like they're watching her with like binoculars. And while some might just be happy for a chance to take a picture, eighth graders Bea Ka'au Moana and Velina Dudua Wong from Kauai had a message. The important thing about it was delivering that message and letting her know that the Kiki of Oahu do need help with their families and their water. Throughout Kamala Harris's vacation, people have held up signs urging more action on the Red Hill water crisis. But in the end, it was the two Kanui Kapono students who mustered up the courage to walk across the sand and seize the moment. Okay, so the Kiki of Red Hill wanted to ask to shut the Red Hill down oh, yeah, under the water. I know, so we've been working yeah. on it, and I, I agree with you. We need to handle that. It's a very big issue. I Thank agree. you. Thank you. Harris taking a quick picture and leaving the girls with some parting words. There you go. And I thank agree you. with you guys, so thank you and continue to be active like that and lead, okay? Thank you. Both Bea and Valina taking the vice president's advice to heart, both hoping to continue to grow as leaders in the Hawaiian community. All of our family has been very, yeah, congratulating us a lot and stuff for like going up to her and being brave. And while it's a moment they'll never forget, these future leaders also not afraid to hold the vice president's feet to the fire. Yeah, it was a privilege to talk to her, but um, I hope that this time they keep to their promises and they do want to help the Hawaiian people.